But welcome back, everyone, to our daily devotions. Um, We're continuing our voyage through the book of Jonah, and we've titled today's lesson, Are You Forsaking God's Favor? And I believe that question is asked and very much so implied here in Jonah chapter 2. See, a comforting promise and fact of Scripture that is unmistakable and one that we often grab onto, it's on T-shirts, on the bottom of cards, um, little plaques have been used, this verse has been used, and it's this, that God will never leave us nor forsake us. And I believe that wholeheartedly, and I'm sure you do if you're watching this devotion. But let me also say that there is a vital piece of information that God gives us with that promise that's attached to that verse. Look what it says here in Hebrews 13, 5, one of the examples of this verse in Scripture. This is what it says. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So that promise is attached, by the way, to an understanding that we are not pursuing the idols of this world. See, what God is saying is, is that you can count on my presence regardless of whatever life throws at you or even whatever messes you create, by the way. You could take my promises of my presence and peace to the bank. Lock it up. It's there. Now, perhaps a good follow-up question to ask ourselves then is this. Can God count on me to be faithful in my commitments to him? We know he's faithful to us. We know we could trust him. But could the same be said with you and I as it pertains to our relationship with him? See, this is a good internal question because there's so much at stake when it comes to chasing foolishness, isn't there? We saw how that worked out for Jonah, right? In chapter one, it proved to be a very costly choice to pursue his own selfish desires. And such is the case with you and I. See, although God will never leave us nor forsake us, we could potentially forsake him and his favor for the idols in our life instead of chasing after him. And so we could become blinded by our selfishness, can't we? We could be um, like that dog that returns to vomit, as it says in the scriptures, going back to where we shouldn't. And so those pursuits that God does not condone, we could easily miss God's blessings of grace, mercy, forgiveness, peace, and of course, his unconditional love. Oh, they're there. They're, God hasn't gone anywhere. It's you and I that could be blinded to these blessings that are right in front of us. And so Jonah makes that clear that it's possible to forfeit God's favor. Now, during his deep sea you know, rescue experience, Jonah gets in agreement with God, which as we've been saying at church, is the exact place where you want to be in this life. His perspective is renewed, and he's back on the path that he needs to be on or in the the swim lane that he needs to be on. Look what it says here in Jonah chapter 2, verses 7 to 9. I can't wait to read this to you. Listen to what it says. Jonah says, As for my life was fading away, I remembered the Lord. I just want to pause right there and say that that is a very healthy thing for you and I to do is to take inventory and to remember the Lord. And I wouldn't be surprised if there were other situations, obviously nothing as monumental as this episode here on the sea, but I'm sure that there were other provisions that God made for Jonah during the course of him walking with God. Again, he's called God's servant. He's a prominent character mentioned in the New Testament. I'm sure that there were things for Jonah to remember. And right now I wanna encourage you, if you want to combat your own foolishness and selfishness, look back on what God has already provided for you. The enemy, again, wants you to focus on what you don't have and what you lack. Uh, But we need to look back on what God has done. Notice it says this next, and my prayer came to you, I love that, to your holy temple. Those who cherish, now here is kind of the inspiration for this devotion, verse eight. Those who cherish worthless idols abandon their faithful love. But as for me, I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving, and I will fulfill what I have vowed. Salvation belongs 
to the Lord. And sure it does. Listen to what Jonah is saying here. Those who cherish worthless idols. Now, obviously in Jonah's day, those idols um, centered around whether it was a pagan altar or a pagan statue or some type of pagan element of worship that was used. And so that's in play here for what's in Jonah's mind, following false gods, pagan gods as the Assyrians were. And obviously Jonah was wrestling with that, not himself personally, but the people who were going to do it or are doing it as he gets to Nineveh. But what are our idols today? Well, our idols, if you think about it, could be money. See, money's not evil, but the love of money is evil. And that's why we're told, keep yourselves from the love of money. And so money possessions. People today sadly equate spiritual superiority or spiritual relationship with God based on what they have in the bank account. That's sad. That's a dangerous ground to walk on. We got to be careful. And so it could be possessions. That could be an idol. It could be a person could be an idol. Power, illicit pleasures, all of these things, sexual immorality, pornography, and other deviations from God's path. They could all very easily take us away and they could serve as idols. And so we must be clear that God is loving. But if we follow our flesh and we abandon the lifestyle that God has willed for you and I, we run the risk of forfeiting the favor that God wants to extend. Now, it's not for us to try to get the spiritual calculator out and figure it all out. A lot of people try to do that. That's not our job. Our job is to live an obedient life before God, to follow God. This way, we don't forsake our blessings. We don't forfeit the favor that God wants to bring in our life. And whether it is opening a door, whether it's blessing in an area of life that we are waiting for breakthrough in, uh, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, whether it's an answer to prayer, whatever it might be, we don't want to forfeit the favor of God by chasing worthless idols. We don't want to do that. And we want to make sure that we're willing to be transparent with God. See, God never changes. That is a fact of Scripture. You know, His Word never changes. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the Word of God stands forever. And Jesus Christ never changes. Hebrews 13, 8 says it this way, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forevermore. Now, let these truths that we hold to be true from God's word, be the motivation you use to be faithful in seeking God's favor. You know, when I think of the scriptures of people and how they chased after God's favor, again, some of them very humble and maybe some not so humble, but there is this drive to seek the presence of the Lord, to seek the blessing. There's nothing wrong with that. I even think of Jacob, even in his scheming ways, he wrestled with God for his blessing. You know, Instead of you and I wrestling with the world, uh, we need to wrestle with whatever's going on in our heart that doesn't need to be there. And we need to get right with God. And we need to walk on the path that God has because the last thing that we would want to do is risk forfeiting the favor that God wants to extend to us. And so we have a choice. We can live our life according to the world. We could even try to manipulate scriptures to condone a, a lifestyle, to condone a habit, to condone a pursuit. We could do all of that because we have free will, but it doesn't make it right. Or we could be people who say, God, not by my will, but by yours be done. And God, I want your approval on my life, but I need your help. I keep going back to where I shouldn't go. I keep getting beat by this temptation. I keep trying to tr tell myself that I'm right when I'm not. Whatever your deal is right now, wherever you are in the journey, even if you're doing great right now, remember anybody could fall. Jonah was a, a prophet of God and he ran the other way. No matter who you are, you want to be the type of person that is very mindful of the hand of God's blessing and you want to do everything in your power, not for a second, to forsake his favor. And so may God bless you and may he give you the strength and may, even if right now you have been, you know, just given in to the things of this world, I pray that today could be a new day, that you could remember that God is a forgiving and loving God. Those are the favor, that's the favor that he extends, but he's not done yet. He's not done there yet. He has more to give and he wants to open the floodgates of heaven, the, the floodgates of his favor 
but we need to be a people who are not chasing worthless idols. And so may God again give us the strength to confess and repent those things and to walk by faith and not by uh, the sight of this world. And so may God bless you and may he give you the strength. Let me pray for you. Our Father and our God, we need all the strength we can in these areas. We want to be a people who are seeking your favor and we want to live in your blessings, oh God. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and the loving kindness that you have shown to each of us. We ask now, oh God, as we go, that we would be a people, God, who are very, very focused on seeking your favor. We sow these prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.